Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Rob. Welcome to another episode of From My Experience Podcast. Tonight, I have a very, very, very special guest, one of my closest, nearest, and dearest friends, Swazi. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. I feel so special. You are special. That's why I'm having you. I don't just have anyone on the show. <laughs> well, there's that one period where I couldn't keep a host, so co-host, so I was just having random it people. It almost but. sounded like, never mind. Anyway, let's... <laughs> <laughs> Mine just went totally left. <laughs> what, you thought I said hoes? No, couldn't keep hoes, yeah. Well, you ain't supposed to keep a hoes. You know I don't keep hoes. <laughs> 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 oh my god, you fit right in. I promise you every every episode sounds like this and starts like this. Alright, so a couple things we're going to talk about today. But one, and this is just to get a different perspective. We did a show way back about this. But it's good to get a fresh spin and a fresh perspective on it. So we're going to talk about transitioning into a new relationship. So... <sighs> This is, I think this is an important topic and it's always going to be important and ongoing because I'm, <laughs> you can just scroll Facebook or Instagram or Twitter if y'all still do that. I'm not on there. But you can always scroll someone's timeline and just see the craziest stuff and see what they're going through. And you can see their relationship mistakes. So what do you think some of the biggest mistakes are that people make when they're getting ready to go into a relationship? Whether they're leaving one relationship and going to the next or they're just getting back out there after a while, or even like first time? Um, I really think that the biggest mistake, and this is from personal experience, the biggest mistake that I've ever made in relationships that didn't work was making my intentions clear in the beginning. Mm. Making my intentions clear in the beginning, and, and then if I did make my intentions clear in the beginning and they weren't really okay with those intentions, I adjusted my intentions to match whatever they were okay with. So I compromise. Oh, that sounds like someone I know when I look in the mirror. Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Then if that's the case, then yeah. Those intentions have to be very clear. Very clear. I think, and then it's just me knowing you, it's our personality types. Like, we, it's like, we want to be liked if we can help it, but we ain't gonna kiss your ass for you to like us either. Very true. But the person that you're with, obviously, you want them to like you or love you, rather. So, And you don't want them to go anywhere. Because, I mean, let's just be real. Like, there's been times, and I'm so guilty of this. I'm like, Ugh, the holidays are coming up. Do I really want to be by myself? Oh. I've, I've, I've done that. The winter traps. Oh, yeah. I've totally done that. I didn't. I totally. Don't, mm-hmm. I don't like being single during the holidays. Let's just be real. See, my thing is, I don't like people. So, like, <laughs> I don't. Um, I love people, but I don't like people. Like, I like being by myself. So when I'm in a relationship, I really go in, you know what I'm saying, to let them, to sh- so they won't feel like <laughs> I don't want them around. <laughs> I be trying to make people feel like that sometimes, but they just don't mm. get it. They get closer. But yeah, the whole boo and snuggle up thing. And that's funny because people do that, then they end up getting caught. They end up liking a the person. Mm-hmm. They'll tell their friends, oh, I don't like him. Or, nah, dog, she just, you know what I mean? And then when she go mess with somebody else, you and your feelings. It's like, what? Catching feelings. Catching feelings. Ugh, anyway. Seasonal dating. All right, so what else? What else? Dating. Give give the lady some dating tips. Like, oh, you God. gave me some dating tips. Because um, I'm just like an overcommitted person, like, even when we're dating. Because I just find it hard. I don't feel like I have the mental capacity to try to get to know people more than one person intimately at a time. Like, it'll it would... It fucked my head up, honestly. Dating. Okay. Dating, not exclusive. There's a difference between okay. dating and exclusivity. Um, and I really hope that my fiance doesn't listen too hard to this podcast. <laughs> but um, I mean, even when he and I were just dating, I was still openly dating other other guys. Not mm-hmm. no, I wasn't sexually active with all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would still go out to movies and, and go out to dinner. And then I noticed that I started to like my fiance because I would start saving the prime spots for him. So he would have like Friday and Saturday night, and then I'd go out oh. with the other guys on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday. You you know, so, mm-hmm. um, but number one for ladies, you know, number one, always date yourself. When you date yourself, you begin to know what it is that you like. You, you need time for yourself. We need that time to, you know, paint our toes, take a bath, do your hair, relax. Mm-hmm. Dating yourself is probably 
probably key because you're not gonna know really what you like on a date until you date yourself. Wait, okay, so <laughs> I've never heard this concept of dating yourself. So you mean like taking yourself out to a nice dinner or going to a movie or going to the park? Yeah. Loving I mean, yourself. Loving, pretty much loving yourself because at the end of the day when it comes down to it, if that's what you want someone to do for you, you have to do it for yourself. It's the same way as fucking yourself. Like, you have to have sex with yourself <laughs> to know true. what it is that you like. So, I mean... That's true. There's no, men don't have vaginas. They don't know what it feels like to be a woman. We have four... Okay, see, I'm changing the subject. Good, I'm, we're listening. We have four, you know, G-spots, I guess you would say. What? There's four ways that we can come, yes. Jealous, aren't you? No, anyway. I just need to know how to get to all four. <laughs> um, but, you know, the same way you have sex with yourself is the same way that you find out what feels good. Same thing when it comes to dating. What fe- what makes you feel good as a woman? So take yourself out on some dates. Like, when I finally got the gist of, I like dinner in a movie. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily like going out to the club on a date. Some people might. Some people might. That might be their thing. Sometimes I'll go to a little happy hour with my fiance, but, like, we're homebodies. We like to cook dinner together and watch a movie and then fall asleep and then, you know, whatever. So. <laughs> wow. I mean, like, we're complete okay. homebodies and that's what I like and that's what he likes. But then there's sometimes when we're like, ooh, let's splurge. Let's go out to eat. Like, <laughs> See, I need my girl to be like that. I'm a homebody too, man, because I work hard. Like, me, I want... When we do something, I want it to be, like, a vacation or fun, like, super-duper fun. Not just, yeah. like, we need to go on a date because we haven't been on a date in a while. Like, no, nah, we can just chill sometimes. But you said something really key, um, dating yourself. Mm-hmm. I had to learn to do that. Um, <laughs> when I used to teach, I would randomly on a Tuesday or Thursday, right after work, I would just go to the movies or yeah. something. Or go to a restaurant or go to a different bar or something like that. Just to try different things. Or go into a store I never went to before to see what they had and buy some incense and crazy shit like that. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to learn to explore because it also makes you more interesting when you meet someone else. It's like, hey. Ding, 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 ding. Let's go to this little place, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't taken myself on a date in a while. I need to do that. Time to go. It is. Time to go. I do need to take myself on a date. I go, I, I go. I still go on dates by myself. You have to. I, th- I don't think that ever ends. I still go on dates by myself. And I even, like, tell my fiance, I'm like, listen, today is a me day. And he'd be like, what'd you do today? I'm like, mm. I went and got a massage. <laughs> I went to the movies. I took myself out to lunch. I went and got a pedicure. Like that, I'm like, oh, this is the perfect day. I just get to spend it by myself, listen to my little corny audiobooks, stuff mm-hmm. that no one else is interested in. Right. And I, it's pretty much, I call it a day of recharging. Like, I just get to recharge my batteries because when you go out into the world, you're, you know, you're, you're the thing that you do at your work and then you're the thing that you are at your home. And then if you're a sister, you're a sister. If you're a mother, you're a mother. And it's exhausting. And let's just be real. If your cup is empty, there's no way that you can pour from an empty cup. So it's always important to fill your cup now. It sounds like she's about to pl- plug a sponsor or something. <laughs> Look, I'm trying not to go. You can just follow me at Fill Your Cup Now on Facebook. <laughs> Sorry. I had to put that in there. Oh, go tell them. Look. Fill Your Cup Now on Facebook. Um, definitely Fill Your Cup Now on YouTube and Fill Your Cup Now on Instagram. So, yeah, follow me. Fill your cup, ladies and gentlemen. Some good stuff. Um, I've known Swazi for years, years, and she's going to give it to you straight up. Make sure you go follow her and listen, and you're going to get some more gems and some more jewels. So, okay, so how do you narrow the field when it comes to guys? Like, obviously, your now fiancé was the one that stood out the most. What was it that you saw in him that you didn't see in everybody else, and how did you transition to all right i'm going to be exclusive with him and get rid of these other dudes it was a feeling that i never had before i Mm. mean i've been in long-term relationships since i was 15 and i mean they were very long very impactful relationships since i was 15 so being with him like our very first date i had never had a date like that before he made me laugh so much to my cheeks hurt on the first date. Wow. And it was a rainy Monday. Like, I'll never forget this story. It was a rainy Monday. And we laughed and laughed and laughed. And I could just be myself. The same way I'm sitting here being, like, casual with you, mm-hmm. I was the same way with him. And it was the first time that I was in the company of a man 
who wasn't my friend. It was somebody of a, you know, we were trying to see where it was going to go. It was the first date. It's a love interest. And right. I was actually able to be myself. And he accepted me for who I was. And he made me laugh. I was like, oh, there's something different about this guy. So, we, of course, we were having drink after drink after drink. I could tell he was nervous because he was just ordering them up. And he was like, you want some more? And I had to stop after, like, the third rum and coke because I was starting to get a little tipsy. Uh-oh. So, <laughs> and I was, I really wanted more and I could handle more. But mm. I noticed that when I was cutting myself off from alcohol because I didn't want to become loose and, you know, hang out a little too much and mm. possibly even go to sleep with him that night, you mm. know, because he was making me feel that comfortable. Right. Once I saw myself cutting off the alcohol, I was like, this guy, I'm going to make him work for it. And he is going to follow all of the steps that I need him to follow because I know the gift that I have is going to be great. And I mean, now we're getting married. She filled her cup, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 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 wow. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's still pretty awesome. Like, even to this day, he makes me laugh. All right, I need to ask you an unfair question because okay. I find that funny. Um, and not saying you fit into this category, but it's it's like the when women or men, we meet someone that makes us feel that way, we often make them work the hardest. Absolutely. Why is that? Why do the, why do the whack people and the scumbags... You, why do we let them in so quickly? And so, I'm guilty myself, I've been guilty of this. We let them get close to us so quick, but then when we meet that person, it's like, oh man, you're different, and they make you bust your ass. I think it's within reason. Like for example, um, yeah, I made him work for it, but it was the first time in my life that I felt that I didn't have to compromise my standards. I knew he was gonna work for it. Now, let's just be real. One thing I love about my fiance is he likes to call me out on my shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he does it in such an eloquent manner that no one else can talk to me the way he does but him. Mm. Um, and, like, we had been dating for, like, a month. And we had not kissed yet. I mean, he was a great hugger. I would, I would let him hug. Whoa. And we did not kiss yet. And it was, like... New Year's Eve, the fireworks were going, we were already tipsy from drinking, and he leaned in for a kiss, and I was like, ooh, no, nah, no, nah, back up. Ah, <laughs> wait, was, no, you didn't. I told him, like, zigzagged on his ass, because I was not ready, like, I was scared. Wait. One, I mean, I, I'm dead serious, Robbie, I was scared, I was so scared. So, I mean. You zigzagged him I on zigzagged New Year's? I New Year's, I totally, and then he let me have it. He let me have it. He was like, I've been taking you out on dates. I've been buying groceries. Because he would come over, we would cook, and then he would drive 45 minutes back to his house because he wasn't staying And he staying couldn't get a night. kiss. And he couldn't get a kiss. And I, and he was like, I've been doing all of this stuff. And, you know, like, we hang it out. And he's like, I can't even get a kiss. He was like, what's up with that, man? And I just was like, I'm scared, man. And, and like, I was had to be vulnerable in that situation because I realized I was about to lose him. Yeah, I you had were. to be very <laughs> vulnerable in that situation. And then, like, the next day was a complete disaster because an ex decided that they wanted to pop up. But whatever, that's a whole nother story. But, I mean, he <laughs> stuck with me through that. And then I was like, okay, I think I should start kissing this guy. Because, <laughs> like, he's showing himself to be so true. But, I mean, it's okay to be vulnerable, especially when it's around... The one that makes you feel the most comfortable. And what, what what happened was is that I was scared of him because I knew that he made me feel good. And I was like, ugh, am I really what? ready? Am I that, really ready? Am like, I, okay, you know what? You scared the mess out of me. You, you just answered my question. Am I really ready is where the fear comes from. Yes. Yes. Am I really ready is the, where the fear comes from. And then we're not going to mention that I had just got out of a bad relationship and I didn't want to start something new without being friends first. Yeah, I just I got the 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 friendship talk um with the person I'm talking to now. Um she was like I want to make sure we're really good friends first, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And I think that is important um because I think it makes you respect the relationship more. Oh, absolutely. Um that's not always the case cuz I <laughs> I've had situations where we were really good friends, but the relationship ended in the worst way possible. So, but um, I feel like that's a <clears throat> that's a very important key because you know your friends. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you know them. You know their family. You know their quirks. You know how to push their buttons. That's why they're friends. 
And I think those are some of the best people to build relationships with sometimes. I do agree. I um I mean like sometimes if the friendship is a little too long, I guess you would say it might be better to say friends because I've started a relationship in college with a good friend. Mm. It just didn't work. But um, but if it, it's because we were just friends. It wasn't like there was any love interest. It was just kind of like, hey, you know what? We friends for a while. Let's try this. And it just yeah. didn't work. Yeah. But if I think if you start off with the intentions of, you know what? This is somebody I really... And you set that intention of, hey, I really do like you. I would love to be with you one day. But let's take it slow to be friends first. I think once yeah. the intention is clear... What is stabbing me? Uh, a pain. I didn't know that was there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that... I had the same issue. Like, I just wouldn't say what my intentions were. But this last chick, like, I told her, I was like, <laughs> I said the wrong thing, but I said the right thing. I was like, I ain't trying to just be your friend. Like, my goal is to be with you. Like, I'm going to come see you. I'm going to I'm gonna chase you. I'm going to shower you with gifts. Like, you're just, this is just who I am. Mm-hmm. You know, the friendship is important. Yeah, I want to develop the friendship. But I want you to know that th- these are my intentions. Like, I don't just want it to stop there. Now, if you just want to be friends, and now that I've gotten to know her better, if we end up, I'm gonna be disappointed as fuck if we don't end up together. But I would have made a great friend. We have really good conversations. Um, we motivate each other. Mm-hmm. She fine. That ain't got nothing to do with the friendship. But <laughs> moving right along. <laughs> what? So you talking about your, your butterflies and all your googly stuff? I but I don't mean like she fine. I don't be all like that. <sighs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes. Have your moment. She fine and go on well. I have my moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you don't have to answer these questions if you don't want to, but I gotta play a little hardball. Oh gosh. Feel free to bounce any questions back. Um, so now you dated, you're in love. And it's funny, we we're talking on the last episode about relationship timelines, like how long it should take from dating to relationship to engagement to marriage. Um, and how people have these perceived timelines in their mind, which I think we all do. Like, I think it's bullshit. I think, I think there there is a timeline, but there isn't. Like, you would hope that within, I guess, a five year span, you'd be at the end of that road. No one wants to just say, "All right, let's just go," and then twelve years later, like, mm-hmm. fuck, we ain't going nowhere. Yeah. But I don't feel like it should be a, "All right, you got two years, and that's it." Like, <laughs> some people would do that to you. So, <laughs> how did um? How did things end up working for you? Like, you have the ring. Lovely ring. Thank you. Drama. And let me tell y'all, it's not the $25 engagement ring that was floating around. That's <laughs> 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 definitely not that. Um, I think our intentions were pretty clear in the beginning. When we became friends, we mm. were just friends. And he just was like, I'm not looking for nothing casual. I'm looking for my wife. And then I was the same way, you know. So we had a lot of the same goals. We had a lot of the same interests. Um, and ladies, enjoy every relationship that you're in because that relationship is going to prepare you for the one. Let's just be honest. So it might be a True. shitty relationship, but learn your lessons from it because it will prepare you for your husband. True. Next. Okay. So um, we had clear intentions. We, I knew what I did not want. And mm-hmm. I think because I knew what I didn't want, because I experienced so much of what I didn't want, I knew exactly how to voice what it was that I wanted. Oh. Yeah. So that was different. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> Forget. Oh. So how'd you transition into the engagement? Like, what was oh, that? Oh, okay, okay, okay. How long, okay, so how long did y'all, how long were y'all in a relationship before you actually got engaged? R- um, rough, rough estimate. About a year and, about a year and eight months. Before we got together. And how long did y'all date before y'all actually got together? Like six weeks. Okay, so you... It was like six weeks. It was really short. It was really short. Six weeks. So, okay, I'll give you a month and a half. So, a month and a half, y'all dated. But how much time did y'all spend together in that month and a half? How many dates would you say y'all went on? We only went on like three dates. And he came and stayed with me New Year's Eve in my house. Um, He slept downstairs. I slept upstairs. Let's just be clear. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, and he came with me and stayed with me in the house. And by that time, by the time that I was comfortable enough him coming to my house, I had already knew that the feelings were starting to be there. And and I think what we had a lot of phone time. Oh, together. thank you. 
We had a lot of phone time together. You just together. gave me something. Thank you. It, thank you. Well, you're welcome. Um, I mean, when I say phone time, like, like it was a mutual conversation thing. Like, I would pick up the phone and call him, but he would also pick up the phone and call me. And, and let's just be clear, ladies. Do not be initiating the freaking contact, okay? Sit back and let that man come get you. Wait, okay? wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me adjust my mic a little bit. Uh. Wait. Um... <laughs> I agree to disagree. I feel like it should be mutual. It is mutual, but you have to make the first step. What you mean by that? I need to call you all the time? No, 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 no. Not You're just all saying the time. when it. I'm saying. My bad. We had some technical difficulties. I had to plug my laptop in. All right, so Swazi when you were single versus Swazi when you were in a relationship. We're talking about establishing the communication. Or you said the guy needs to. Make the first move. Make the first move, okay. So basically, I'm saying all that to say is this. And, and everybody can ring, pretty much say that men are natural hunters, right? Yes. Men are natural hunters. But if a woman is always contacting the man first, saying, hey, I'm available. Hey, whenever you're ready. Hey, I'm right here. Hey, I'm right here. Oh. He's no longer interested in you. You're not giving him the chase. You're not giving him the hunt. And basically, all you're saying is, is, you know, hey, whenever you want to hang out, we can hang out. Or just your op your schedule is open. And, I mean, you have to somewhat be unavailable. Because he needs to make sure that he makes the time for you to be a part of his life. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying mm. only let the guy make... I mean, you got to make sure he knows you like him. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, some of y'all are real trash at that. Let me tell you. Like, I done had some girls... Like years later, like you remember when such and such? I really liked you. We? I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, like, I, I mean, you gotta play coy, play coy, but I mean, still give little clues and stuff that you're completely interested in this guy. Like for example, um, my fiance was really good at calling me. You know, during the middle, he didn't call me really in the morning because we both were really busy. But calling me like towards the end of the day, hey, how was your day? You know, because I'm busy, he's busy. We both have businesses, so. It's not like we really have time to talk during the day. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we we would have a lot of phone time in the evening. But, you know, if he didn't initiate contact by a certain time, I'm calling him going, hey, what's up? What's going on? Like, you know, this isn't like you. You normally call me by a certain time. He's like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. You know, this is going on. And, and same thing, vice versa. Like, I would call him in the middle of the day and just be like, hey, just want to let you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. So it's definitely a give and take. But, for example, on the first date, he called me, like, Monday lunchtime. It was like, hey, you want to go out on a date tonight? And I was like, oh, you know what? I have plans tonight. Um, but maybe we could do Wednesday or Thursday. I'm free Wednesday or Thursday. I didn't have plans. My plan <laughs> was to go home and get in the bed and, <laughs> and watch Netflix and chill. Like, those literally. Are those are, those are my, those those were are my plans. plans. Those yes. are still plans. Let's, let's get so it straight. So it wasn't like I had a plan to go out and hang out. It was a rainy Monday again. Mm -hmm. So I was not really interested in staying out. But then he said, you know, I just, well, normally I don't ask on the same day, but I work in construction and we it's a rainy day and i don't know when i'm gonna have another rainy day so i i would rather take you out when i have the time and i was like okay well let me call you back and let me see if i can readjust my plans but i mean something as small as not letting him know that oh yeah sure yeah yeah okay okay yeah tonight's fine yeah not being so available come on you gotta make him work for just a little uh, bit <laughs> i i don't i don't know how i feel about that i don't like that i get it but i don't like that i don't like it because i know how i am i think Time is a very valuable asset between two people. My time is valuable just like your time is valuable. And I think with what you're talking about, ladies, you got to balance it. Because like me, if I feel like you don't have time for me, then I'm going to stop. Absolutely. Like if you don't make time for me, then I'm going to stop. Because it's like, I know I can find someone else that will. And on the flip side, like you said, when they're always openly, readily available, typically those people get bored and they're clingy mm -hmm. and they're going to be up your ass. Yep. And I, I can't I can't do that. Yeah. I don't like that because I'm a busy person. I got this podcast. I got a gaming podcast. I got a career. I DJ. I do a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. um, but when I'm into someone and I know I want to show them that I like them and I care about them, I put in the extra effort. So I make time. Like I will travel to come see you. Wink, wink. So... <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you got to make the guy make him hunt a little bit, make him work a and little. I, I mean, and he'll not, appreciate. We appreciate yes, it. Like yes. I, I ain't gonna lie. The person I'm talking to now, I've never. I wouldn't really say I'm. I am working hard, but I've never really done some of the stuff I'm doing now and like stepped it up to the level that I'm at now. One because I realized I'm looking for a wife. Which I have been looking for a wife. But now I'm just showing... I need to show chicks straight up like, this ain't no bullshit. Like, this is the type of dude yeah. I am. Yeah. You know, you need. I'd rather you see that sooner mm-hmm. rather than later. Mm-hmm. You know, and then I think sometimes when you do that, you kind of call them out. Because it's like, alright, damn. They doing all this. Like, alright, I gotta step up. Because I'm watching you too. Mm-hmm. Like, are you reciprocating? Are you making time for me? Are you giving me conversation? Yeah. Because you're not appreciative of the work that I'm putting in. And I'm out. Yeah. I mean, yes, yes, and yes. I think it takes a, it takes some really... You don't have to be, like, completely developed. Like, because at the end of the day, the day you die is the day you stop learning. <clears throat> but I just think it takes two people who are who are aware of what it is that their attentions are. Set the attention straight up front. And then these are my goals. This is what I really want to do. And then if, if you're not a part of that game, like if you don't want to do that and you just kind of want to play the game, just be honest with the person. Yeah. Because there's some people, I mean, I, me and my fiance, we started dating on plentyoffish.com. I mean, let's just be real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there was a lot of fish that just were real, real. And they were just like, listen, I'm not looking for that, but I'm looking for this. Are you interested? No, I'm not interested. <laughs> but there might be other women out there who's like, yeah, I'm down. You yeah. know? Yeah. I, I mean, it's just, it's whatever you you like so it's i think you just stay true to what it is that you like and what you want it will happen just be patient however do not rush to the altar because you think you did some personal growth when you were single you gotta do triple that <laughs> you gotta do matter of fact quadruple whatever five six seven no ten times that to be somebody's wife okay deca deca <laughs> something deca something man all right, so I don't have a tongue anymore because I done bit it off a few times. <laughs> yes, so you answered another question for me, and it's one of God. Um, I don't want anyone to take offense to what I'm about to say. No, just it's one it. of the, I guess not, I guess not fears, but it's one of the things that I look for now in a woman because I feel like. A lot of times, women just want, some women want that engagement and marriage, and they feel like they don't have to do anything else. Mm-mm. I got my ring, I got my man, you're stuck with me now type Mm-mm. deal. And that scares the shizzle out of me, because like, I feel like me giving you that ring is the next level of commitment and the next level of us dedicating to our, dedicating to each other. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, now we got to step up to the next level of this relationship it ain't i don't i think some people relax even in the marriage five ten years later like you relax i feel like i need to step it up every year because it's like okay you with me for another year yeah, they might get bored here's your vanilla ice cream you know <laughs> and nobody likes vanilla ice cream let's right be real. so you don't always have to be vanilla ice cream you know stay in shape um take them somewhere different do something that they want to do even Try though you don't want to do move. it Yes. Missionary's boring. Yes. <laughs> do at the office. Hell. Wait a minute. <laughs> Where are we? Is the table clean right now? Is the table clean? We good? It should be. Okay. Just hope. I, I didn't use it. Okay. Mm, sure I wouldn't. Shade. Hell no. Oh, it's time out. Anyway. That's funny. But yeah, you got to step it up, man. You got to step it up and do things differently. Always remember that there's two people. You know, I, I've had a friend tell me how bored she was in her marriage, but she oh, just, man. she's a loyal, dedicated person. And I felt for her because I'm like, dang, because she's a nice looking young lady. They're still young. Um, they have some kids and it's just like, I don't understand. Like, I know the stuff that she's into and I'm like, that stuff that she's into is fun. It's not out of the ordinary, mm-hmm. but you're bored out of your mind. I can't, I don't want to spend 40 years with someone bored. And sex is important, damn it. Let me tell y'all. Very. It's very important. Like, very, very. especially men, we're sexual creatures. Women are sexual creatures. And it's like, I only got you now. Like, you are my only source. My only source. That's difficult. As a woman. I mean, as a woman, that is difficult. I've, I've had, I have a couple of friends who 
are just like sex goddesses. I mean, like oh. their sex drive is like through the roof, and, and they had they be hounding their husband, and I'm like, damn it, how can I be like that? I used to be like that, but what happened was I gained thirty pounds because this man done kept me fat and happy. <laughs> <laughs> so the sex drive to go on now. Let's just be real. Being a wife, I mean, we don't have kids yet, but we do have a house together. So then we got to think about, you know. Washing the dishes, keeping the house clean, mm-hmm. making up the bed. I know I don't even have kids in the mix yet, but I wash all the clothes. Because my honey goes out, he makes all the money. Not all the money. I make money too, let's just be real. But mm-hmm. he pays all the bills. Okay. I don't. He doesn't ask me to pay any house bills. He asks me to keep the refrigerator full. And that's exactly what I do. Mm-hmm. If he needs it, I got it. Not a problem. But... Considering that this man doesn't ask me for any money to contribute to the household now, ladies, let's just be real. Not every husband is going to be like that, so don't be jealous, okay? Yeah, I'm just saying. I, let me tell y'all, if y'all <laughs> like me or flirting with me now, no, I'm not paying all the bills. <laughs> let's I'm just be you. real. However, my grocery bill, you know, I, I still pay all of my own bills, you right. know, so I still have my car note, my cell phone, my car insurance. I mean, we're not quite married yet, so we haven't joined all of that together. Right. So I still have to maintain myself and then put groceries inside you know, the refrigerator, but like, I clean the whole house, mm-hmm. and then I like the house to be clean, and then it drives me crazy, as soon as I clean the house, he just comes like a dang on rhino through the house, and, and like, he didn't even see me clean it, so, it's like a bull in a china shop, I love mm-hmm. it so much, yay, <laughs> yay, <laughs> and so like, you know, when you spend all day cleaning the house, and then he comes home and does that, and then wants to rub on your booty, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. You don't piss me off. You don't make me feel appreciated. I'm not feeling it at all. So it's hard. You know, of course, I still have moments when I initiate, but it's harder. As a wife, I'm starting to see, like, I can see why women don't have sex. And I'm like, oh, God, like, I don't want to be that person. Yeah. I don't want to be that person at all. But it's scary because I can see how women do it and how they're like, please leave me alone. I have a headache. I can see how they do it. Wow. It's super you, easy to do because we're just gave exhausted. Me something else. Yeah, and that's why I think it's important too to like to pamper. Like I pamper my women. You know what I'm saying when I'm with them. Don't woman, say women. Saying, that just makes you sound like a hoe. Like, <laughs> my bad. Well, women. people know me. No, I've never been like that. I won't be like that. There's too much stuff floating out here. Mm-mm. Who are you telling? But um, yeah, like I I I'll, I'll rub the feet. I had the bathrobe because I know I know you're tired. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I know you're tired. I know you're doing stuff. And I'll try to make your job around the house easier. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, dishes or whatever, let me do the dishes. Like, yeah. let's rotate. You know what I'm saying? Regardless yeah. of who has the heft of whatever bills or whatever, like, let's rotate. Like, you take the night off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't just want to, I want to enjoy you. I want to be able to enjoy you and I want you to enjoy me. Yeah. So it's like a balance. But I will say, you know, Robert, you are a very intuitive man. Like, you can kind of see it, feel it, pick up on it. And most men are intuitive, but they don't speak on it or act on it. So they're just like, oh, she in one of the moods again. And just kind of like leave her alone. You know, like for me, I get the foot rubs and the back rubs. But I have to say, mm, baby, you know, will you please rub my feet? I actually have to verbalize it because I can't expect him to just pick up on it. Mm-hmm. And then he'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, not a problem. But what we get into this rut in these relationships is that we like, oh, I don't been with him so long. He should know. Same yeah. thing, vice versa. Yeah. No, there are couples who have been married for 50 years and they say, I'm still learning. I'm still learning yep. things about my spouse. I'm still learning things. So, like, don't be shy to just say, honey, I was feeling this way. Will you please help? Because you're help mates. Like, you're supposed to help each other in these things. And, you know, like, when me as a wife, and I might be a little bit old school and I might get shunned for this, but me as a wife, my job is to be... His support system. His support system. So when he goes out as a black man in this world that we live today, he needs to come home to peace. So if I have something that Wait, I Wait, stop right there. <laughs> Woo! Ooh, ooh. He needs to come home to what? To peace. Like peace. You Y'all. need to be able to come home and rest your head up on mama's shoulders and tell me about your day because I know it wasn't always the best. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you. That's a very real thing. Like, men and women, you know, like, nobody wants to deal with the chaos and the frustration to work all day. You might have to be around someone you don't want to be around. Shit might not have went your way and you ain't make no money. You ain't make that connect. 
and then you got to come home and fight and fight that's your place of refuge mm-hmm. like i'm i'm like even thinking in my mind <laughs> because I, I believe in energy like i'm really to a place in my mind where i feel like if me and my girl or wife want to have a disagreement, we're going to go outside or in the garage. Like, I don't even want it in the house. In the house, yeah. At all. Agreed. Because that needs to be a place of refuge and comfort. I don't want you to come home and feel uneasy because mm-hmm. you see my car in the driveway and you know it's going to be some BS. Like, all hell. Right. He home, goddamn. Damn. <laughs> I wish I would have got home first so I could fake sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Been fake there, sleep, man. Yes. That fake sleep. They yeah. leave you alone. I mean, come home to peace. And that's the same thing for vice versa, like you said. But at the end of the day, if my role is a support role, please, fellas, do know that your woman goes through things too. And she needs to be able to come home to her king and just lay up on his chest and be like, Daddy, it wasn't a good day today. Right. It was not a good day today. And I mean, like, sometimes when we come home, both of us are exhausted because we don't talk to people all day. All right. we want to do is sit in the recliner and kick our feet up and watch something that we can zone out on. And, and not I'm even okay talk to it. each other. And not even <laughs> talk to each other. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, like, and just be intuitive to the fact that, like, listen, you had a good day? Mm, okay. Me too. Let's just make some ramen noodles or something and watch TV. And, I mean, it's one of those things where you just have to be in tune and intimacy is into me, you see. Like, you have to be in connection with that person. Like, it's, it's, that's not just somebody that you share in household, yep. you know, things with. That's, that's like, you now have like the same soul in so many words. And that's why dating and spending time with someone and actually getting to know them and building a friendship is important. Like, you call a person your friend because you want them around, you hang yeah. around them, you like them. You like your friend. Because there's a lot of people that I love, but I don't like. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let's not talk about mamas, okay? (laughs) Ooh, listen. (laughs) Me and my mom, man, we went through some stuff. We went through some stuff, and I just had to stop it. At one point, I just had to stop and have a very real conversation. But, (laughs) yeah, that's why we say all that stuff, man. It's, It's important. It's a holistic thing. And then it's like, it goes back to the beginning. What are your intentions? Yeah. Like, if you just smashing this dude, but you embarrassed around your friends because you just smashing, don't make it seem like he a dog and he whack or he ain't doing you right when you told him you smashing, but you got your girls thinking you trying to actually be with him and you're not. Right. Uh, Gotta watch what you say about people when not when they're not the around. Truth. That's the truth. Oh, that's the truth. But it wasn't easy getting the ring. You make it seem like you had to like, all right. It wasn't easy in the ring. It really wasn't because even after the intentions were set and clear, yeah, my fiance was not going to propose until he felt ready. We're not. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, listen. No matter how much pressure I gave him, <laughs> and I, he always reassured me, "Baby, I'm gonna ask you to be my wife. I'm gonna ask you to be my wife." And I'd be like, "When, God? <laughs> like, <laughs> when is this gonna happen?" <laughs> because in my situation, I had given up a lot and didn't have a ring yet, which I Same. never recommend. Never, ever, ever, ever. I don't ever, 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 ever either. Again, I don't if ever recommend. If y'all listen to the last episode, y'all know, like after my last relationship relationship ended i had to go back to sleeping on the couch i ain't had no furniture yes fully vested now you lucked out you guys lucky it could have been bad bless (laughs) you you and you got yours things between y'all i'm not gonna say happen fast but fairly quickly they progress quickly yeah but y'all spent a lot of time together like we still do that's my buddy yeah like people say oh a year and eight months but they probably spend at a seven day week. How much time were y'all spending together? Every day. See, that's the difference. So Every it's really day. that. That's really more like three, four, <laughs> three, four years yeah. in my mind. I don't think there's a day that we went without talking to each other. Still, like since we started talking from that initial conversation, right. I don't think there's a day that we've gone without having a conversation with each other. And see, that's important. So okay, yeah, <laughs> uh, we talked about pressure. So. <sighs> Why pressure? Like, why can't, why can't you let me do it the way I want to do it? Because that's the, I feel like the engagement and the marriage and all that, mm-hmm. 
the engagement, that's us. Like, mm-hmm. that's really for us to plan, to work at, to do. Like, mm-hmm. that's for us. Everything after that, I feel like, is for y'all. The ceremony and all that stuff. Because, hell, I'll go right downtown somewhere. I'm like, boom, let's, let's do it. I don't need a huge freaking wedding. Like, I'm not, you know, but... What was the, why, why did you, was the pressure out of fear or anxiousness or? All of the above. All of the above. Um, what I recommend, ladies. Because is, you gave up so much. I did. Okay. But I also, marriage was also on the table and exclusivity was already there. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this is going to have to be a different podcast. So we're going to talk about the different ways to be in a relationship. But what basically had happened was. I had my own house and I I sold my house and I moved to his hometown and lived with him, which one has never happened in any relationship I've I've ever been in. It's always been they come and move in with me. Mm -hmm. Um, So just the simple fact that I sold my house was like, oh, I'm losing my independence. But, I mean, he asked me to move, one, so we could be closer together. Because, like I said before, we lived 45 minutes away from each other. It was taking a lot of time from our busy days to go back and forth to see each other. And it was so we could be closer. So, we're living together. We're cohabitating. And, we, you know, we're getting this thing together. And I feel, I'm feeling like I don't give up too much. And no matter how much he reassures me, we're always going to be anxious. Especially if we're living together. We could have bought a house together. I'm still always going to be anxious like, oh, he just wants the whole cow and not pay for the milk or something. Whatever that yeah. saying is. Yeah. So um, we do have to have a date in our mind. It doesn't have to be a verbal date or a verbal right. understanding. But we do have to have a date in our mind that, listen, I'm going to do this for ourselves. To reassure ourselves as women. Like, listen, if you do decide to live with a man for a while before you get married, I suggest you do it. Because you want to make sure you you are okay with the way he lives Bruh, first. listen. Be okay with the way he lives first. Because you might be like, oh, I don't like that habit and I can't get over that habit. You're going to live with that habit for the rest of your life. I just want you to know it. They don't change. They do not Please change. Please say that. Say that one more time. <laughs> say that one more time. Be okay with the way each other live because Habits do not change just because there's a ring on your finger or you signed a paper saying that this is my husband or this is my wife. Say that one. <laughs> Listen, that I'm glad I knew that when I did. I'm and glad I knew that when I did. Like, I feel like the only way that that stuff will change is if you know that you truly love that person and it's really a problem for them. Then okay, baby, let me let me work on that. And they make a that. conscious decision. And to they do make it. a conscious decision. But sometimes to do you it. might need help. Right, and it, it, might, it might, and you know, like let's say, let's say every time he cleaned the the front, you know, you like to sit with your front door open, with your with your screen door right there, your nice beautiful glass screen door. Mm-hmm. But he always forget the fingerprints by the doorknob, and when you sit on the couch and you look out the door, you see that handprint. Yeah. He, he he tell you, he tell you, baby, I done cleaned it. I cleaned it. Well, before he didn't clean it at all. So you saw all the handprints. But now that he cleaned it, he just doesn't do quite a good job. Yeah. Sometimes you can be like, you know what? At least he tried. At least he tried. Yeah, you got to pick your battles now. You can't argue about everything. And that's the thing. But if that person is unwilling to compromise and they're just like, well, that's just who I am. Okay. So you're telling me this is the best you're going to. You're telling that person this is the best I'm going to be. Mm-hmm. Meaning, because to me that says I'm not going to grow with you. And I'm not going to try. And I'm not going to try. You shouldn't even be thinking about marriage with somebody that's like that. Shouldn't even. There's no way. If there's not somebody that's going to grow with you and challenge you to grow, you don't even, don't even try and be like, oh, yeah, I want to marry him. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Because I remember, like, I challenge my fiance often to grow. Mm-hmm. And he... He, like, I'll grow. What happens is that I don't necessarily come to him and be like, you need to grow or do better. I don't say, <laughs> any, I don't say anything. I actually focus on my own personal self-development. Mm-hmm. And then I grow. And the gap between he and I gets bigger. And then he steps up to the plate. And he grows. He grows right along with me. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes he'll grow. And I'm like, hold up, wait a minute. And then I step up to the plate and I grow with him. So it's like we challenge each other to grow in different ways and i mean that's what you're supposed to have you're not supposed to have unequally yoked when when they talk about that stuff in the bible that's what they're talking about they're not talking about oh a sinner and a saint they're talking about you guys have to grow together like 
That's I, it. <laughs> I agree wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. Think of it like this. You grow physically. Like, you're not the same size you were when you were 10. So, damn, how old am I now? Ooh. Shut up. So, I'm in my early right. 30s. <laughs> I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. I'm not the same person I was a year ago. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, the person I'm with, I don't want them to be the same person they were a year ago. Definitely not. Because I've learned new things. I've seen new things. I've seen the potential. Hey, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's work on this. Mm-hmm. I think we should always be striving to be better people. Absolutely. So there's the growth there for you. It should be an adventure. Ooh, oh, I like that What's it going to be like to date? It right. It should be an adventure. Right. Oh, you got me. You got my head spinning and thinking about some things. Yeah. And it you should just, really be. Like, you just made the person yeah. I'm talking to much more attractive, too. Because I didn't, I didn't think about some of the aspects that you're bringing to the table. And that's the oh, other thing, y'all. Thank you. Don't let. Make sure you have a good friend. Swazi is one of my good friends. If you're dating someone, you. You know, you always going to talk to your friends about the people you're dating. You got to pick those people wisely if it's going to be more than one person. But always remember to your core that you're with that person. You spend the time with that person. So you know the character traits and the personality traits and the small cues and stuff like that. Because sometimes people just have those invaluable traits that you can't find. That's true. You know, and they're not going to be perfect. Like, you have to adjust and kind of mold to each other. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why people think, oh, he don't make enough money. Okay, how you know he ain't going to have it in two or three years? Yeah. It's really about the heart because the way (laughs) your spouse comes to you wrapped in a package is nowhere near, anywhere close to what you thought you was going to (laughs) marry. Nowhere near, anywhere close you thought you was going to marry because, like, when I realized that this man was the one, there are some things that I just had to overlook. When did you realize it? Oh God! Do y'all? I wonder if y'all know early or late. Oh, we. I knew early. I knew very early because I could just be myself. It was the first relationship that I was ever in, and the same Swazi that you're in love with now is the same Swazi he gets when we're at home. The same person, and it wasn't like I had to take a hat off. And then go home and put another hat on. I was like, yes, I get to be myself. So I knew very early. I knew like, I mean, it took some work. Let's not, let's, <laughs> let's not think that this is a freaking fairy tale, people. I might make it sound like a fairy tale. But he didn't know how to communicate at all. It was just shut down. Boom. I don't want to talk. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up, buddy. We're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. like, but I knew from the way that he made me feel that I had to challenge him. This is where we go challenge each other to mm-hmm. grow. I had to challenge him to grow and express himself. And it started off as, you know that song, Some Type of Way, Make Me Feel Yeah. Good. So I said, baby, if you feel some type of way and you're not ready to talk, just tell me that. I feel some type of way and I don't know how to express myself. And then that to me was all I needed. All I need you to do is just say, I feel some type of way and I don't know how to express myself or I don't want to talk. Cool. Because I know you're going to go and you're going to think about it and then you're going to finally formulate the words and then we're going to come back and talk. But don't just shut down on me and tell me everything is okay. Yeah, I hate the fake everything is okay. Yeah. Talk to me or like you just said, because I do that now. Like um, when I'm upset, I'm like, I really don't want to talk about it right now. Because I used to be very explosive. Like, I used to just say what came to my mind, when it came to my mind. And I've said some very hurtful things to people. Mm. Very. Mm. Like, even one of my close friends today, she's, every once in a while when we start joking real hard on the phone, you remember that time when you said, I'm like, come on, bro. I was like 17. <laughs> yeah. Like, dang, hey, come on. But yeah, that, and that's another thing. Don't force one. Don't force someone to do that. Like, I commend you for recognizing that that's who he was. And you were patient enough to let him grow to be able to be comfortable with you to communicate. Because you never know how someone was brought up to communicate. Like, maybe that, like, my dad, the way he raised me, if I wanted anything, I'm talking, this is from the time I was 13. I could have straight A's, which I typically did. Perfect (laughs) report card. But if I wanted to go in the store and get a video game, he would say, why should I buy this for you? He made me explain myself and explain my actions at a very young age. Mm. I hated it. Mm. I'm like, I'm a stupid kid with good grades. Give me this thing. I don't care if it's $150. (laughs) But he taught me that 
you should be able to explain yourself. Like you should be able to give people a reason, a real reason why you shouldn't just do stuff just because. Mm. And just because pisses me off so bad. Like, well, you the man. The fuck does that mean? Yeah. Like, or you the woman? What? No. Yeah. I I want an explanation. Like, no. Be- yeah. Because people, if you if you do just because, then people always pick up these societal norms and stereotypes right. and throw them around left and right. No, let's have oh. some let's have some meaning behind it. Let's have a lot of meaning behind it because I mean, like at the end of the day, just because I choose to run my house traditionally might not be the way of somebody else to run their house traditionally. So maybe the woman goes to work and makes all the money, and then he stays at home with the kids. I mean, it's. It's common. There's families it's, like that. There are families like that where it actually works. Yeah. So, I mean, like, just let's take away the stereotypes. Oh, my gosh. Completely. I'm just like, I don't, I don't, I don't want a woman like that. Funny enough, like, I want you to have the ability to do those things, but mm-hmm. I want to help do those things, too. Yeah. Because I want a working woman that's going to be out there contributing. Like, you do that, too. Like, you, I know you help him with his business. You run your own business. Yeah. That's what I want. I don't want someone who feel like they can put their feet up, and then I'm out here no. killing myself. No. All you got to do is pop out the kids. No, that's not happening. No. I don't want that, man. You got to have that, that work ethic because it builds another level of understanding. When I tell you... I had a rough day at work and I'm frustrated and I'm tired. You understand because you're going through it or you've been through it. Mm-hmm. It's not just he always tired or she always tired. You can't relate. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not going to understand. Yeah. So it sounds like BS to you. Yeah. When this is a legitimate thing. Like, yeah, people don't get that. I wonder how that role is going to play, though, when we when we become parents. Like, you as a parent and then us as a parent. Like, Because, I mean, there's just certain things that I, I, I do feel that it changes the whole dynamic of the relationship when you become parents. Like, I feel like somewhat you're not allowed to be tired because them little suckers are going to need Yo, everything from you. <laughs> I think... I'm, I'm going to be real. I just thought of this off the top of my, top of my head. I think kids are the reason why... I wouldn't say the kid themselves, but I think the responsibilities that come along with a kid Mm -hmm. stress a relationship so much that that's why some relationships end. Like, I could imagine, like, me being a former teacher and I had to deal with 30 or more kids a day. I couldn't imagine being a single parent, let alone being in a marriage and someone not pulling their weight. I'll be ready to kill them Mm -hmm. because a kid needs so much attention. attention. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's it's a little better now these days because yeah. of tech and stuff like that to keep yeah. them busy. But you want to kind of watch that too. You don't want them yeah. to be raised by the tablet and YouTube and all yeah. that. Because honestly, I'm old school. Like my kids are gonna have books. They're not gonna have TV. I want to raise my kids the way I was raised. Right. Like yeah, a very educationally uh, educational foundation. Like I used to read books all the time when I was a kid. I played video games and stuff sometimes, but like. A majority of it was academic based and my parents spent a lot of time with me that's what I want I want my kids to know how to mm-hmm. um what's the thing like when you're around people and y'all are interacting with each other there's a word for it interacting I don't know yeah sure that like some, <laughs> some people just don't know how to interact with other humans they it's don't, awkward yeah. they don't know how to be so nice busy being in front of the phone and tablet like yeah 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 Ooh, Ugh, no. yeah you as a parent I'm kind of excited about it, to be honest with you. Just to be clear, she's not there yet, y'all. She's I'm not, not pregnant. There. I'm not pregnant. pregnant. But <laughs> <laughs> can we at least make it to the wedding? Like that's my goal. Just don't get pregnant before you. On the flip the side, too, though, I feel like it, I feel like it should it brings people, families closer. Too. It does. It's like, oh my gosh, we we created this beautiful this life beautiful together. thing. And then, oh, I had a conversation this morning um, with a family member of mine, and and. We made that we had the understanding of we are family, we're here for each other, mm-hmm. and we're a tribe. Like, let's do this together. Like, because at the end of the day, when we have kids, our kids are going to their house. Same thing, vice yep. versa. Like, and I know I can trust my kids at their house because there's so much wrong in the world. Like, yeah. you know, there should be, like, if I could literally, I mean, I probably am a little too extreme when I say this, but if I could literally have like a 20, 30 acre compound and like all of my family like <laughs> live on the compound with a big fence around it. Like I would love that. Cause then yeah. I, I would like feel safe, yeah. you know, but anyway, 
that's just my weird, you know, colonistic. Yeah. No, I mean, the world's different. Know. Like, you know, when we were kids, we could go outside and we know to come in when it's dark. Now, <laughs> I wouldn't let my kids outside. Yeah, a lot of parents won't. No. Like, I see a, I mean, it's just weird. Like, I just remember even when I was younger, I could drive through a neighborhood, see kids riding on their bikes. Now, typically, when I see kids, they're in the front yard and a parent is either standing at the screen door, like the grandma with mm-hmm. their hands on the hip. Or they're mm-hmm. sitting outside with it. They don't ever leave that proximity. No. Because people are crazy. People are very crazy. And I used to go down the block, around the corner. Right, I used to be gone. Gone. On my bike. Chicka, chicka, chicka. They're like, yeah, gone. gone. And my mom was like, where you at? Oh, that's someone's and house. And this is no cell phone era, too. Yeah. No cell, no, no tracking, no nothing. No cell phone, no beeper. No, no internet, beeper. really? <laughs> <laughs> was it? Yeah, I mean, there might have been, but no computer in the house. Like, there was just none of that. It was just... And, you know, there's more community, too. Like, because if you go around the corner and you mess up and do something bad, your mama going to hear about it. you go going to get that butt cut anyway. Twice. Right, exactly. Twice. Twice. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the world now. Anyway. All right. Um, yeah, this was a great show. Thank you. I've kept you long enough. Thank you so much for your time and information. I've had so much fun. Yeah, exactly. This is therapeutic, man. Um, I agree. I started this. It's funny. I started this in college when I was thought I wasn't going to finish college. <laughs> It started out like as a Ooh, joke. Secret. Dun, dun, dun. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? I did not know that. Wait, which part did you didn't know? That part that you didn't think you were going to finish college. Shh, listen, that praxis test a bit. Shh, listen, we had that conversation off air. Okay. I went through a lot in college. I started it and then I stopped. And then um, <laughs> I got another story to tell you that relates all the way back to that. Oh, God. Then I started up again with a couple friends and we just been rolling since. But. Another thing that really prompted this in these conversations is this age of social media and how people gravitate toward things on the internet. I just started seeing an abundance of just negativity out there. Oh, like there's so much negativity. So I'm like, people like you and me, the way we were raised, the way we grew up, I feel like somebody needs to hear this. Like if someone hears this show and it helps their relationship, I feel like I've done my duty. Yeah. All right, go ahead and plug your websites and all that stuff again. <laughs> so you can follow me, Swazi. It's um, www.fillyourcupnow.com or YouTube, Fill Your Cup Now. Instagram, Fill Your Cup Now. Facebook, Fill Your Cup Now. Um, I will say I'm in the beginning stages of getting everything up and rolling. However, do not go and just be like, oh, I'm never coming back. Come back. I've got some great stuff for you, okay? And I will be back on the show. Um, I think one of the next topics that I want to talk about is energy, sex, and relationships. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just letting you know. It's going to get hot and steamy a little bit, okay? I might have to get permission to have that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. All right, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Totally Swazi will be back. As you already know, from my experience podcast, we're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, and of course, iTunes, from my experience podcast at gmail.com. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you go follow Swazi on all her pages, and we will see y'all next time. Thank you for listening.